right so now we can see we have this particular two tables which are available and uh, so first we will try to do a data model and if you can if as i already told you uh, we have in our data if i show you over here we have two location ids this is a pickup location id that is the customer is been picked up from which location and this is a drop off location id right so these are the two locations which are important for us and based on these two locations we have to create the relationship right so this both should be connected to locations table right but it depends upon us which is the active relationship and which is an inactive relationship right so first we will do an uh, you know relationship so for that i will just go in manage relationship right and from here we have to create a new relationship so i will just click on new relationship and i will just create first table i will just select the first table that is trip details and second i have to connect it to locations so first i will just create it on based on location id the, you just have to select this and i will connect it to this location id so this is a pickup location id and i have joined it to location id and here it is automatically showing us that it is a mini to one relationship that is fine we want the same way and just click on save and as soon as you do you can see a relationship has been created that is on trip details table there is a mini and on locations it is one that is as i told you the location id which is available over here if i show you the location id each and every value or each and every id on this particular field is unique and different so this is a primary key for us so obviously it should have a one value because there is one and here is a star because there are many on few location id if you see the values are been repeating you can see here 186 186 137 and 137 so values are repeating so there are many values uh, of same digits or same id available on uh, different rows for few locations so it is one to many and i will just close this and here you can see now this particular uh, i can say relationship has been created all right and if you take a closer look on this particular relation so when i take hover over my mouse you can see it highlights those particular fields on which it has been joined and here you can see one to many i, I told you one to star means what star is many one means one right so i have told you the uh, why it is one to many and all those and it should be one to many only this is your fact table this is your dimension table so there is always a relationship of one to many between uh, dimension table and the fact table all right and then you can see a direction in this way right so means what this is the direction how it flows so filters whenever you are applying the filters on this particular data model it is always recommended that filter should come from this particular table right so this table from this table the filters should come and uh, so that you will have an correct result so the filter direction is in this way so whenever you select any member from location or city it will be easily filtering out the trip details data right so this is a filter direction so whichever uh, whichever table have a primary key so from that table the filter direction always flows right towards the many table right so you can see star now we have to create one more relationship why because we just connected the locations table to pickup location and this will just give us the information of which is location for pickup but we also want the information of table uh, that is of drop of location right you can see this is a drop of location so we should connect pickup location as well as drop of location to locations table we already connected pickup we will connect now drop up so i will just go to manage relationship and i will create one more relationship create i want it from trip details to locations table and now i will join the drop up location select this and i will connect to location id same it will be again many to one relationship and cross direction should be single and i'll just click on save and you can see a new relationship has been created and one in one uh, one important thing to note over here is you can see the this is the this is this was the first relation which we created i have selected the check mark that is on pickup location id to location id and right now it sits active right you can see this is active right now and this is the other um, uh, you know this is the second relationship we just created which is on 
drop of location to location right on the location table which is inactive right you cannot create both active relationships uh, for a single data model from in between uh, same two tables right you can either you can just create one active relationship so we will keep this active because pickup on pickup locations we are going to do more and more work but we are also going to do some work on drop of locations as well so this we will keep inactive but this will be more actively used and more charts will be created on pickup location id so we will keep this active but from here you can make it active also right or from here you can make it switch to inactive or switch to active you can do it both from here it doesn't uh, say it, it it doesn't matter that you have to create this first and this first doesn't matter you can change the active status from here that is status to active and inactive for now we will just keep same close it and now here you can see a new relationship when i hover over my mouse you can see it has been created between drop of location id and location id so here it is in a dotted formats why because it is an inactive relationship right so you can make this particular relation active uh, when you create a, a, any visual and write a dax for it so that you can make it an active so through dax functions you have to make that particular relationship active and we are going to see dax functions uh, so that you can make this active and then actually you can draw some results based on drop of location right so any table in between these two tables you can create as many as relationship you want but only one can be active right one only can be active and multiple relationships can be inactive between these two tables it doesn't matter many can be inactive but only one can be active actively used in between any two tables so this can be an interview question which can be asked for you and they can also ask you how can you make a relationship active in between two tables if it is inactive then you can make it through dax functions i will tell you which dax functions we are going to use to make it active and then we will see how what are the results you are getting when you make it active right so which is very important here also you can see in the data you can see your one cross is there which means that it is inactive and here you can see a proper relationship is there which is giving us an information that it is an active relationship all right so very important thing to note over here active and inactive relationships now we have to create one more table into this particular data model uh, which is nothing but a calendar table or we also called it as a date table now you will say why we need that information or why need why we need to create it because if you see in our problem statement in our first dashboard we have to create uh, this particular chart that is by trip type or uh, if not for this also we have we will have to create it for uh, the total booking by day and for this uh, we have to bring an information from date table if you are performing anything on the dates so it is always recommended by microsoft a uh, power bi that you should create a date table and the date table we will be always creating here in this particular project on pu location uh, that is on pickup time right so you can see on pickup time this is the date field and time field available for us so based on this field only we will create our uh, um, uh, what i can say the calendar table all right so first i will go in table view and here we will create a new table but before creating a new table what we have to do over here is this pickup time right now you can see this field is a date and time field so i have to extract this field that i have to split this particular two field in two different fields that is it should only take a pure date over here and second it should only take the times over here that it should only show us the time so first i will just do this for first over here so for that i will right click in trip details and i will create a new column and i will name it as pickup time so this will be my pickup time oops is equal to and i will use a date function for that so i will use a date function so i have to extract the first argument that is year so i will take year and year from where i have to take it from pickup time okay so it will take year from pickup time close that bracket for year second argument that is month so again month from pickup time close the bracket for month and day from pickup time okay 
close the bracket for day and the close the bracket for date and hit enter so you can see pickup time is already uh, a field been used so i'll just close this and i will name it as pickup date i will name this as pickup date hit enter now you can see this particular field have been created over here so date has been extra exactly been brought over here but you can see there is one information of time is also been brought because pickup time already have a time component over here but values are zero zero for it and we don't want that to be represented so what i will do i will just select this particular column go to column tools over here and you can see the data type so i will just change the data type from here to just date okay so now you can see you can have or you just have a pure date over here and by making of this particular date only we will try to create now calendar table so now i will just go in table tools go in table tools and i will just create a new table now just create a new table and i will name it as calendar table okay so i will just use a calendar functions for it so you have a calendar function so it is asking us what should be the start date so start date you can either hard code it or you can just ping it from the field from uh, already tables or already present table fields any field from the already present table you can bring it from there also or you can just hard code it in double noted commas whichever you want but it is always recommended to bring it from the other field so i will just bring i will take the minimum of pickup date okay so this is the pickup date field uh, which we already created and calculations a few minutes ago so this will be the minimum of pickup date so it will create or it will take the minimum date from this pickup date and i want one more that is maximum date from pickup date okay so this is maximum close the both brackets now what will happen it will identify the pickup date minimum date and maximum of pickup date so in between these dates so the minimum date and the maximum dates in between these two dates whatever dates are there right so it will give us all the dates row by row and it will be different on each and every row so as soon as i hit enter so you can see i get dates from 1st of june to 30th of june so minimum date which was captured was uh, 1st june and the maximum date was 30th june because we have the data for only one month and in between all the dates are been brought and you can see each and every date on each and every row it is different right so each and every date is different on each and every row right so this is important for us and you can you can see now this time component is also present over here we will change this so just go in data type and we will just change it to date so make make sure it is only date and now i will go to model now so other columns in this particular calendar date we will create later as uh, we move ahead in our problem statement and we start designing so at that particular moment i will tell you why we are creating those and how we will create those so i will just go to model view now and you can see a new table has been created over here that is calendar table and as i told you it is based and created on pickup date so what i will do i will just you can see the pickup date is there so i will just connect this date to this date so i will just create a date and i will just drag it over here so this is how you create a relationship so this is also one way of creating relationship instead of going over manage relationship and create you can create in this way also so you can see date from here and pick up date from here and i will just click on ok so as soon as you do it you can see one more relationship has been created over here and when i hover over my mouse it you can see it is between pick up date and date and you can see here for this particular table it is one and from here it is many relationship why because pickup date in this particular table has been repetitive here it is uh, it is one date on each and every row so here it becomes automatically and primary key but if you see in trip details here the pickup date you can see first june first june it is repeating again and again right so that's the reason here many dates are there on different rows so it is many over here that is star so in this way we have created our data model and this particular data model can be consider, considered as a star uh, schema right so this is a star schema data model where we have one fact table and there are two dimensions table one is a location table and another is a date table or a calendar table which are two dimensions table and at center there is one fact table so this is a type of a star schema for us so in this way you create a data modeling and always remember 60 to 70 percent of time is spent on 
uh, data and data modeling itself right 